All right, hello. This is your final um, video announcement for me, so the last time that you'll have to see my face um, after this summer semester. I hope, first of all, that it's been um, a really great semester for you. Um, like I said, it was going to be fast and furious, and so these last eight weeks have probably felt pretty crazy. Um, you should give yourself a big pat on the back for making it through the last eight weeks because um, it is a lot for a summer session. And so kudos to you for making it to the end for those sacrifices that you've had to make throughout the summer session to hopefully um, achieve the grade and accomplish the course as you had hoped. So um, kudos to you and yay, you've made it to the end. The only thing that I really want to highlight in this video announcement is really just the fact that your um, three recipe cards are due by tomorrow. So you definitely want to make sure that you've been working on those. You know, we've been talking about them quite a bit throughout the semester. And so um, you hopefully have a really good jump start on that and you're feeling good about where you're at. Um, there is a sample recipe card embedded within the learning module. It's been embedded the last couple weeks, so you can certainly um, go out and take a look at that. Just remember that you want to make sure that you have the title of your recipe, your ingredients, your instructions on how to prepare it, and then that critical component about how this recipe represents your food culture. Because um, that is something that I think we've talked a lot about this semester, and I think it's a really good um, way to really encapsulate this entire course and highlight how food is really a part of our culture and even though that culture may not be you know I come from German heritage or I my family descends from Norway our food culture can be however we identify our food culture and so um, you'll notice in my example that my food culture has a lot to do with family um, and this idea of growing a garden, harvesting food, and then trying to prepare foods that help represent that. So that I would say is a piece of my food culture. So remember, don't get yourself really like sucked into this idea that it has to represent culture in the sense of like I'm from Mexican descent or I'm from um, Asian descent and all of my recipes have to represent that. It does not have to be anything like that. It could certainly be um, whatever you identify with as your food culture. You will up, up, um, upload those recipe cards. Um, they are due, like I said, by this um, Saturday, so tomorrow, uh, July 27th by 11.59 p.m. So you definitely wanna make sure you upload those three PowerPoint slides representing three different recipes addressing all of those things that you want to address on those recipe cards. The only other thing that I just want to remind you all of is your end of course evaluations are also still open. Those are also due um, tomorrow when your uh, recipe cards are due. And so you want to make sure that you take the time to get in there and complete those. As of right now, um, this class your completion rate is about 61%. So it looks like 11 of you have responded to that um, end of course evaluation. So those 60% um, of you that have as of right now will get six extra credit points. Um, but the more of you that respond that haven't responded, the higher that um, completion rate goes and then the more extra credit points you will um, obtain for completing that end of course evaluation. And remember that is super helpful for me. It's something that I do utilize um, quite a bit uh, as I'm building this course and moving forward in future semesters to really give students um, the best opportunity in a quid class. I know not every student is really excited about completing this, this first semester experience course and having to be forced to take a class that maybe they don't necessarily want to take. Um, so I really try my best to make sure that in that um, course, students have a good experience. So please provide constructive criticism, provide feedback that you felt um, was helpful so that I can continue to do those things. But if there are some things where you're like, yeah, she didn't do a stellar job in XYZ, um, like I said, provide some constructive feedback so that if I do need to make changes, I can certainly do that moving forward. Um, the last thing that I just want to say is thank you. Uh, I hope you had a great semester. I hope you enjoyed the course. Um, kudos to you all for making it through uh, Michael Pollan's Omnivore's Dilemma book. It is definitely probably in my top five favorite books in terms of 
um, books that I would say have changed my life and the way that I look at food. And so I hope that you enjoyed it. I know at times it probably felt like, oh my gosh, what is he talking about? Or this is a lot to digest. Um, but kudos to you for getting through it. Um, I do like to end the course with your final discussion board in week 15, because I do think that this last question really does encapsulate some of those final thoughts, um, really around the entire book. And a lot of you did a really great job of encapsulating that, and, and that made me really excited. So this idea of what we're eating, a lot of you did a really good job of tying that into um, we don't know what we're eating. As consumers, we go to the grocery store and we're completely removed from this idea of where our food comes from. A lot of you addressed the fact that what we're eating is corn. We're eating um, corn in a whole lot of senses of the word, right? We're getting it in high fructose corn syrup. We're getting it in xanthan gum. We're seeing it pop up in our like pills that we're taking. If you take ibuprofen, if you look at the back of the ingredients, you'll see that corn is a key component of that. Um, we're seeing corn being fed to animals, which is then transferred into the meat, the milk um, that we're consuming. So corn makes up a lot of what um, we are eating. And then this idea that um, a lot of you also talked about grass and this idea that we really removed ourselves from this system where animals were raised on grass. Um, they were fertilizing the soil to transferring them to feedlots, finishing them on corn. So again, what is it that we're eating? We're not really sure. I think a lot of us are fairly removed from this whole concept of where our food comes from, um, which is really ties into that number seven question. And I thought a lot of you did a really good job of um, this, the uh, statistic that Pollen gave us that our food travels 1500 miles to reach our plate. And so where does it come from? For a lot of us, we don't know. We have access to a lot of food, which is great. You know, I can eat an avocado in March if I want to, but that avocado probably came from Peru or maybe it came from Mexico and the politics behind some of that. Some of the things that we probably don't think about when we're um, preparing those meals. And then I really, really loved uh, a lot of your responses for that last question. So that true accounting of what does it really cost? Um, a lot of you did a really good job of addressing some of the environmental impacts. So that 1500 miles, the fossil fuels that are used. Um, a lot of you talked about the ethical treatment of animals and really a conventional agricultural system where we're using a lot of pesticides, herbicides. We're growing things on a mass scale. We've really decreased the amount of biodiversity that we're finding in our crops and what we're producing. A lot of you did a really good job of addressing that. And one of you, um, I'll call you out, Ethan, you did a really good job of talking about um, the cost of all of this from an emotional or social standpoint. So we talked a lot about the pleasures of the table and this idea that we're starting to lose our food culture. Our food culture is shifting. We don't sit down at the table and enjoy a meal anymore. We don't have the conversation. We don't really connect with where our food comes from. And we are losing that. I, I would definitely agree with Ethan's assessment of that. And so it's certainly something to think about, you know, You'll remember at the beginning of the semester, I told you you'll make between 150 to 200 food thoughts a day, whether or not that's just the question where you're asking yourself, what am I going to have for dinner to, um, you know, as you're putting something in your mouth, is this good for me? Is this not good for me? Am I thinking about how it was slaughtered, how it was treated, those kinds of things. And so food is at the forefront of our mind, whether we psychologically believe that or not believe it, it's just a, it's a unconsciously we don't think about it but it is the reality and so um i don't it it's something that i hope it's i hope it's maybe brought it a little bit to the forefront of your mind i hope when you go to the grocery store you're thinking about some of those decisions um, and i hope that maybe it's kind of put a new spin on this idea of your food culture um, recipes that you can enjoy with your family and um, really the pleasures of the table and um, eating. And so with that, I hope 
you had a wonderful semester. Um, I wish you all the best of luck in your future endeavors. Some of you will probably be taking a little short break before you head back to school. Um, for some of you, you might be deciding, making that decision that like going back to work or maybe not continuing your education is, you know, something that you're toying with. Whatever it is, I wish you um, the best of luck. If you ever find yourself on campus, please stop by and say hi. It's always fun to see my students and actually meet them and know that I'm always out in the campus garden. And so if you wanna come out and help me harvest some vegetables, last week we were picking um, some zucchini, some summer crick neck squash, some beets um, and some tomatoes and cucumbers. So things are starting to come on and all of that stuff is for students, it's, it's free. And so I encourage you to come out, say hi, and uh, pick some vegetables and really see what that process looks like. Best of luck. Again, stop by and say hi and enjoy the rest of your summer break.